Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. So welcome to my ultimate guide for chapter five. Now in this video, what I want to do is I want to run you through um, all the normal mode stages of chapter five, basically the main story stages. I'm not going to, I didn't have time to clear all the side missions yet. Um, I didn't have a lot of time recently, but re I, I was able to um, basically clear through the normal, normal mode and a few challenge mode stages of chapter five. Um, with the exception of 510, 57, and 53. I haven't gotten around to the side missions yet, but we're going to be going through the normal stages. And I think in a future video, I'll be going through the side stages as well as the challenge mode um, once I clear them. And if you don't know, this is my free to play account. Um, it's, it uses only four star units, as you can see over here. I've only raised four star units. All the five star, six stars are untouched. So you can see, and this account, um, has started during the first week, so it is relatively progressed. It does have a lot of E2s, and um, for for four star units, it's actually very very easy to E2, which is why I have a lot on this account. Actually, more than more than on my main, which is quite funny. Um, but the other thing is, you you actually don't need a lot of E2s to clear the normal mode stages for for chapter five. Um, but for challenge mode, you actually there's a there's a few like stat requirements for certain units, and E1 units really just aren't going to be able to you know it, it just just aren't going to cut it. So this is my main team. Uh, most of my units are I'm going to introduce the units like right now just so w while we get into it, um, you know no one asks like you know what level are your units, what level are their skills. Basically, all my units are are. Um, their skills are at rank 7. Every single one of them are at rank 7. I think that with the exception of Gravel over here, who only has rank 6 on her skill. I don't know why I didn't upgrade it to rank 7. Well, time to, uh, time to upgrade it to rank 7. There we go. Alright, now, now Gravel also has rank 7. Anyways, all my units have um, their skills at rank 7, and they're mostly E1 max level, and with some of them being at E2. I think the main um, important thing is like Shiryuki being at E2 because Shiryuki actually gains some extra range. She's there's certain tiles that she can't hit if she's only at E1. So I think uh, Shiryuki is also the first E2 on this account, and um, I think having your ranged, your range snipe, your your AOE sniper like um, at E2 is pretty important. Like you can actually do a lot of really cool things if you have your AOE sniper at E2 because they get their range increased. So if you have like Shiryuki or Meteor, or if you use Meteorite, um, you know, I, I strongly, strongly recommend you bring them to E2. But besides that, we're we're gonna go into, um, into the stages. Now what I have is I have recorded every single run of all my stage um, in, in this folder. And it has, we're, we're actually just gonna go through each, each one of them. And um, I'll talk talk you through my my kind of my thought process of each every single stage. Now I probably won't have time to timestamp this, so if you you know if you if you if anyone would be so kind, please please help me, uh, and I will I will pin your comment at the top of YouTube, and uh, love you forever. But anyways, the the purpose of this video isn't to really um, you know be like, hey, here's here's the homework, just copy it. I want to kind of um, guide you through like, you know, which units you could use in which slots and which units are, you know, replaceable. You can you can use a specific type of unit in, in that slot and kind of get you thinking. So in the future, you know, maybe you don't have to rely on copying someone else's else's um, guide. And I think that's the that's the main purpose of this video. So this one, it, this stage is very simple. There's three exits you can see over here. And the top exit, um, no unit actually walks past it for quite a while. So you really only need to block these two at the beginning with your vanguards. <clears throat> and I'm talking a lot. I just uh, chug my jug of water. So. It's relatively straightforward. Um, you have your two vanguards down, and then you have your two snipers down. A single target healer. This is a pretty very standard setup. 
Now, what's special over here is I'm using a ranged um, guard to be able to hit this guy without him being able to retaliate. And then I put down a, you know, my one block guard and a one block vanguard to finish him off. I didn't really need to do that. Um, he probably would have died by himself. And then I put down a healer over here to basically keep these two healthy. And this basically, after I switch out the vanguards, is the final setup. So afterwards, I switch out my vanguards. And this pretty much it is it for the final setup. Um, this is also the exact same way I did it on challenge mode. <laughs> so it's uh, it's pretty straightforward. There's There's not too much about this level. I think this one's pretty easy. So 5-2 is, uh, what's 5-2? Oh, uh, this one. All right, so for this one, um, I think I think a lot of people want to try to like block them over here, which is not, in my opinion, not that good because um, if you block them over here, basically, what if you block them like down here, um, you're kind of splitting up like the DPS and healing. So if you just have your like Vanguard around here, or your your melee units at around here um, you can actually cover a lot more ground with your range units on these two tiles so basically uh, the plan is to have my vanguard down very quickly and I had a, a single target uh, not a single target a one block vanguard facing down and the reason I did this is because later on there's gonna be um, these dogs there's a lot of dogs that like walk run by really fast and I plan to put a tank here but even the tank plus the two vanguard isn't able to do enough damage to kill the, the, the dogs plus the the stuff that they're tanking at the same time so um, there is the chance that something will actually slip past so having the vanguard facing or the the one block vanguard facing down helps helps me DPS those down and um, stops anything from slipping by so this is actually a very very important detail to have your um, vanguard or you can actually use this probably use a one block guard in this slot as well facing down but um, using a vanguard is nice because you can actually refund her for 100% of her cost later on I don't think I end up using using the deployment points but um, it doesn't matter too much now this is also another um, this is actually the best spot to put your AoE healer because your AoE healer uh, there's gonna be units that run on the top side over here to the exit and there's only two melee tiles that you can use to block them so i'm i'm going to be putting another defender over here and this way if you put your aoe healer facing the facing um to the left then your aoe healer is actually able to heal this tile um, these two the and basically these four tiles at, at once so this is a very very good spot it, she covers a lot of ground at this on this tile So afterwards, um, these, this guy spawns, and then I put my defender. Um, I already put down a defender over here. This is pretty straightforward because there's a lot of guys running at the bot side, and just having courier here isn't going to be enough. And then I put Jessica behind behind them, um, a single target sniper behind them to do some damage, and another single target healer facing up to cover basically these four tiles. And then afterwards, once I have enough cost, um, I put my range guard facing facing this way now you can see that frost leaf is actually able to cover a lot of ground on this this slot as well so if you have a ranged um a ranged two block guard like silver ash or um lapland this is a very good spot to put them because this way um, they're able to help dps on this tile as well as this tile if anything like actually if there's too much pressure and they start slipping past and then courier has to block them um, she's able to dps this tile and she's also able to help do damage um, on the top tile over here. So this is a very good spot to put your, your, your range guard. So as, as you can see, the stuff over here is dying. And then these three are going to be running. And then Frostly is able to help do damage to, to the top, top tile over here as well. So because there's, there's three of them, um, I was afraid they were, they're not going to be doing enough damage. I retreated Courier to put Shirayuki here to do some damage to the to this top lane that's running running over. 
And the Matterhorn, since he's three blocks, should be able to cover um, enough. And then with Jessica Frostleave here, um, I think there should be enough DPS if anything like slips by. It's probably somewhat unlikely. And then I retreat my Vigna at this point and put down Gummy, just for because Gummy can block three and she can also help heal uh, Matterhorn as well. So she can provide a bit of extra healing. And at this point, I pop all my all my cooldowns. There's a lot of enemies running through at this point. And um, this part is actually like, you know, one of them almost got through. But I think because there's nothing up top and my courier is already ready, I could have switched my Shariki back to back, back to courier on this slot as well. And then at this point, um, it's pretty much over. So that's five two. 5-3 is actually a little bit more complicated. This one's actually quite tricky because there's a lot of like moving parts for this this level and the MVP in this level is going to be your one block guard. Now there, the thing with these um, these casters, I think if I go go up a few more seconds, I'll actually show the, uh, the description for the casters. So basically they, ha they have fairly high defense as you can see over here, so they have fairly high defense. And the way that defense works in Arknight is it's additive. It's not multiplicative. It doesn't like turn into a percentage of your, you know, reduce a percentage of your, of your damage. Um, it's additive in Arknights. So basically it's just like your attack minus their defense, essentially. Uh, meaning that you need to have high enough defense to actually do damage to high armored units or else you literally just do no damage to them. Um, now, there's two ways to do that. You can either use Arch Damage to basically, you know, kill high defense targets, or just have so much attack that you basically have more attack than their defense. And that's kind of where the one block guard comes in. Uh, if you watch my team building video, you'll, when I talked about the one block guards, basically what makes one block guards special is they, they can only block one, which is kind of their like disadvantage, but their advantage is that out of all the units, like, or at least like all, all the guard units in the game, um, typically speaking, one block guards have the best, best stats. They have the highest attack and the highest HP, which makes them extremely, extremely strong for like soloing, um, soloing enemies. So uh, one block guards, they, you know, a lot of people say like Melantha is really OP, but if you just take a look at her, you'll know that, you know, she's, she's not OP, she's just a one block guard, right? <laughs> and one block guards basically, um, they they just have very high stats. So because your one block guard has a lot of attack, um, they can basically just do more damage than the enemy's armor, essentially. So I'm just gonna use my one block guard to take them down. And then at this point when I have enough cost, I'm gonna put my healing tank over here to block. Um, if you if your if the healing tank you're using is like a higher rarity, for example, if you you're using like Saria plus Scotty, and then like there's not enough cost, what you could actually do is use Gravel to like stall, and then um, remove Gravel and put down Saria, if you're using like a six star um, healing tank. And then over here I put Vigna to help do some damage. And Vigna mainly just because um, I can refund her cost later. So over here, I'm like, um, I actually put down Perfumer face, facing down. So Perfumer is actually able to cover this entire area by herself. And she can also, um, you know, heal, heal behind her. So because I know Perfumer is healing, um, I, I can put down Scavenger to deal with this guy. Now normally Scavenger isn't able to 1v1 this guy, but because there's Perfumer healing her at the same time, um, she's able to do it. So I just have Scavenger fight this dude. And then I eventually remove Vigna, refund her cost for Shaw. Now Shaw I'm using over here not as a, um, not as, not for her push, but for her ability to, to hit all blocked units. 
So I'm kind of using her as an AoE guard because I, I didn't raise any AoE guards yet. So that's about it. Um, I'm going to put Shaw down, down there. And then now my one block guard is ready again. So I deploy my one block guard to 1v1 the, the casters again. And then I put down Frostleaf. In hindsight, I probably should have faced Frostleaf the other way because you know she's doing a bit of damage to these guys. But um, with Shaw plus like Jessica over here, I don't think this like you know whatever gets down here probably is going to die pretty fast. So I don't I don't think I really need to face Frostleaf this way. I could have faced her the other way to help with the enemies coming out the other side. Now over here, you don't need to do this. I I was just testing it out. I was seeing like if I use Vigna plus Gravel, if I could take him down. But I still wasn't able to take him down. So I'm just kind of waiting for um, my my one block guard to be ready again. So I just stall him with gravel. And then Matoi Maru has um, 10 seconds left. And then once she's ready, I basically deploy her to take down this guy. And then at this point, I actually made a mistake. You can see up here. Um, scavengers actually actually dies and one of them actually slips through what I should have done before was actually switch out scavenger for Matterhorn and I forgot to do that because I was kind of um, trying to kill that caster that was moving but thankfully I was able to react fast enough and use gravel to block over here and have frostly finish him off but just remember to switch your vanguard at some point to to a tank before the end of the stage so that's it for for five three all right, five four. If I remember, this one is like the sniper stage, right? Yes, this one. So for this stage, I actually brought four snipers um, because I have three snipers on this account. And in hindsight, I probably didn't need to bring three snipers. I could have brought a single target mage instead of a third snipe, instead of a third single target sniper, and it probably would have worked. It very likely would have worked. Very very likely would have worked. There's no reason why it wouldn't have worked. But anyways, um, this, this this stage is pretty simple. Units come out, put your vanguards out to block. Um, because there's a lot of units over here, I also put down a one block vanguard to help deal with them. And then I put my two snipers all, both facing right. Now for the second sniper over here, you probably could have used a, a caster instead. And then I have another cap. Basically on the top side, it's basically mirroring my bottom side with a sniper and an AoE sniper. So you can see like this stage is like um, mirrored on both both sides and I use a range guard because there's a lot of drones on this stage so using a range guard is very nice if I had two range guards I probably would have used a range guard on the other side as well but because I didn't have another range guard I used Korra on this slot and I refunded um, refunded Vigna there's nothing that's gonna be um, there's nothing that's gonna slip past over here because they the there's no like heavy units or anything so anything that spawns your your sniper, your range guard, was able to take it down. And then once um, that unit on the other side also died, I removed my scavenger and then I put down my two healers. And they could be any healers. They could be single target AoE healers. It doesn't really matter because um, there's not a lot of damage coming out from the enemies on this stage. So any type of healer that's able to just sustain your units a bit, um, mainly because they're, they're going to get bombed at some point. So you, you kind of just want to make sure they have some sustain because those these like bombing guys with these like low bombs are really annoying um so you need to have some healing so so nobody dies and then at this point once you have this all this set up then it's it's kind of uh over from here so that's five four five four is pretty simple five five is five five i kind of can't really remember all right five five is pretty easy uh, so for this stage, you want to have a fast redeploy unit. Uh, it's very, very, very important that you you have one. And the beginning is also very straightforward. Your vanguards to block the two sides because they only come out from here and they make a circle and then out the other other way and then into the exit. So you want to have your two vanguards blocking. And you see this this um, drone? He has like an extra huge bomb. It's like bigger than the the bomb in the the, the other stage. And this bomb will basically just one shot you. So. Um, you want to have something that can block the bomb, essentially. Take the hit. So I put down Gravel. You know, Gravel, Gravel literally just... She exists to get abused, essentially. Like, I, I send her out to, like, you know, get 
get killed. I send her out to get like, you know, suicide to spiders. Um, I send her out to get like chainsawed by, <laughs> by Big Adam. <laughs> like, she just uh, that's that's really really all I use gravel for. Um, she just. Her, 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 she, she exists to get, get abused, essentially. So, um, over here, I use a AoE healer. Um, I want to use an AoE healer on this slot, mainly because there's going to be casters that are going to come out later on. And I'm going to put an AoE caster behind her. So, having an AoE healer in this slot will help me heal the AoE casters. And because um, the, the heavy guys are going to be coming from both sides, and I have a single target healer here, but no single target healer on this side, meaning that um, there's not as much healing. I used a lancet to basically um, kind of make up for that little bit of difference, make 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 up for that difference a little bit. And I also use gummy in this slot because gummy can heal herself. And at 21, there's also going to be another drone, so I just deploy gravel. And you can see that um, basically this is kind of the final setup. I eventually switch out my um, my vanguards for tanks. This is a very very standard strategy. You know, afterwards you usually switch out your vanguards for tanks, and then there's always one unit limit left on the stage, and that's just for gravel. So anytime a drone with a bomb comes out, um, I send out gravel to uh, to uh, take it in the face, essentially. Yes, that's uh, that's that's the right way to use gravel. That is the right way. That is her destiny. That is her purpose. Reminds me of that like Rick and Morty episode with the, the, the robot. Like the buttering robot. It's like, what is my purpose? So, some of you might get the reference. But instead it's, it's gravel. It's like, what is my purpose? To get blown up by bombs. Alright. My Gravel's actually at E1 max level. She's actually quite tanky with her shield. She literally could face tank that. It's pretty 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 insane. So that's that's pretty much it. You basically after you have all this set up, um, at the very last wave, you just pop all their cooldowns, and every time a drone comes up, you uh, you put down gravel. And I thought there were, wasn't gonna be another drone, so I put down gravel to kind of stall them, but I didn't really need to do that, and now I don't have gravel. So this drone's actually going to kill my Shirayuki, but it doesn't really matter because once the drone gets into the slot over the spot over here, it's just going to die in a few seconds, as you can see. All right. All right. So that's that's five five, and this is five six. Five six is oh, this is the one with the jamming device. All right. This one's uh, this one doesn't have very high stat requirements. It basically just has very uh, requires you to position properly essentially so the the beginning over here i just have my two block vanguard facing up one block vanguard facing up um, and my single target sniper facing to the right and basically the single target sniper is also able to help dps this spot as you can see when some of them actually um, get over here and then i put down another single target sniper facing facing right and an aoe healer um, i have this aoe healer facing down because my tank's going to be in this spot, so she's able to cover all these spots. And at some point, you know, um, I'm going to retreat Vigna, so so um, it's not going to matter too much. Plus, with Perfumer's passive, like the healing is pretty insane on Perfumer's passive. Perfumer is so strong; it's, it's crazy. And then um, I use Shaw the same way again as an AOE guard, as a pseudo AOE guard. And then a single target healer healing my Korra, because when these two big guys come out, um, you need to have a single target healer to basically sustain their damage. And for the first wave, you don't need the jammer. Um, I also took down, down Vigna and put Shirayuki over here on the top side. For the first wave, you don't really need the jammer. Um, just for this bomb drone, once he comes out, you use the jammer. And then it's gone. And at this point, um, you, this is kind of like your final setup. The only thing you'll need to do later on, well actually I switch out my Vanguard for a tank, standard strategy. Um, I, I will eventually remove 
Jessica for Gitano. I'll remove my single target sniper for an AoE caster. After the the two big guys slip past. So around 47. So these guys are gonna start moving. And the reason why you want to do this is because there's a lot. So using an AoE caster actually has more, more damage and actually allows you to basically kill all of them. And if you use a single target sniper, some, some of them might slip past if um, if your sniper is not strong enough. So you're actually using an AoE, AoE caster is better here. And then I activate Jitano's skill and Jitano is able to hit them from this far away. So she's able to hit all these plus these two bombing drones at the same time. Jitano is super strong. She's, she's crazy strong. I think Jitano and Shiryuki are like the best... Uh, Definitely like the best four stars in the game. Probably them and Vigna. Actually, I don't think Vigna's on the same tier. Like Jatano is like, Jatano is so strong. It's crazy. I, I, I originally on my main account I was using Skyfire, and then on my ult I was using Jatano, and I, I like got so used to her like insane range that I eventually st st stopped using Skyfire on my main account and started using Jatano. So after everything slips past, um, Jatano is no longer able to do any damage. You just remove her and start like putting down random melee units at the bottom just to block them to make sure nothing slips by. And then at this point, um, you, you also remove your sniper so you can put down another melee unit. And at this point, uh, you basically win the stage. That's 5-6. Five, 5-7 six. Five, is... Is this the one with the, the freezing drones? Yes. All right. This this stage is super annoying. So these freezing drones actually slow your attack. Um, so they basically, you the the strategy is I I bring three vanguards. Um, most if you kind of follow my team building guide, you probably have three vanguards, two single two two block ones and one one block one. So I put a two block vanguard over here, um, and the reason why I put them so far up is because this this these these six tiles are actually out of the drones um, slow range. So I put him up front, so you can see he's not slowed. And then Vigna as well, he's not slowed. And so only the middle lane is like kind of leaking through. And then I use a third uh, Vanguard all the way back here. Now this thir third Vanguard is going to struggle a little bit with, with them. So once you have your third Vanguard down, you actually want to have, have your DPS down as soon as possible. And I was actually debating if I should put my um, tank down first. But it's probably better if you put your single target caster down faster to start DPSing this this drone over here. And then I put a tank behind my vanguard just in case anything slips by. And then right now I'm just chilling for a bit. And then I put down Shaw. The using Shaw the same way as before, like an AoE, as an AoE guard, essentially. And then um, this this guy's gonna run over, and as he's about to uh, run to the exit, I put down Gummy to block his way. And then I retreat Vigna, put down a another um, single target sniper facing up. And then I remove Courier. And I put my Gitano facing up. At this point, I did a lot of um, moving around. That was actually really, really fast. So I removed Courier. I put down Gitano. I, um, the moment I put down Gitano, because once I put down Gitano, top side will have enough damage to kill whatever is coming through. So I no longer need to have Haze here. And I need to have Haze later for the, to kill this drone. So I'm re I retreat Haze now to so her cooldown starts um, basically... Her redeployment time starts going down, and then I, um, I, I also put down the uh, the jamming device once it's at 40. So when the moment it hits 40, I put down the jamming device over here. Now scavenger because scavenger isn't receiving any healing. At some point, she's eventually going to die. Whatever vanguard you put here, if your vanguard is, you put here is weaker, it probably already died, which is still fine because top side actually has a lot of damage now. So there's there's um, you don't have to worry too much. And I put down Jessica to start DPSing these drones. Now my unit limit right now is at zero, and but once my Vanguard dies, I have 
um, my unit limit will be at one again. And I'm just waiting for for um, my single target caster's cooldown to be ready. And then once it's ready, I just deploy her immediately to start working on this drone over here. So this is the last wave. I have everybody just pop all their skills. Shoryuki Chitano use, use all their skills. And then at this point, um, because I know topside already has enough damage, I retreat Jessica. And I, I was kind of worried the bot side wouldn't have enough damage. So I retreat Jessica and I put down my one block guard to do some damage. And you want to kill this big heavy guy as soon as possible because your Haze actually will target um, the, the one that's closest to the exit. So she will actually hit this guy before she hits the drone again. But once the drone gets into the spot, um, like when she, and it's the only thing that Haze is hitting. And once it's once it actually gets out of the slowing range and into the jamming range, then um, Haze will start doing a lot of damage. And you'll you'll see it melt like super fast, like this, and then it goes down. So that's basically it for 5-7. Um, 5-7 five, seven. Five, seven is probably one of the harder stages. And you can't do this for challenge mode because it doesn't let you use casters. But um, Which is why I'm just raising a few supports and stuff to, to do it in challenge mode. Uh, it's going to be a, a bit rough, but, but it shouldn't... Um, it's not going to be the end of, end, end of the world. Alright, 5-8. Uh, five eight is when they. I think five eight is when they introduce the crossbows, right? Five eight. Yes, five eight is when they introduce the crossbows. All right. So five eight. Um, basically, you'll see that this lane over here, this lane, where I'm putting all my units, this lane over here isn't going to be, be hit by any of the crossbows. So I actually put my vanguards down on this lane. And you notice the units actually run to this exit first, not this one. And the ones that run to this exit don't start spawning for, for quite a while, which is why you can actually put your units down in this lane, because there's no point blocking this lane and taking damage from this crossbow right now. So as more units come, I put a healer facing down. Um, I basically, you can put any three like melee units down here. Um, I just use like the lower cost ones, like a one, one block guard, one block vanguard, and a vanguard to generate DP. And then you can put down your AoE sniper in, in this this lane as well, um, facing facing left. And your AoE sniper will be able to basically cover these two tiles. And then I put a AoE caster facing down, another healing healer to basically heal these two, and the um, and my Shaw that I'm putting down over here. And I'm actually just using Shaw again as an AoE guard. Um, and also to stall. You can see Shaw's like just pushing them back and stalling and then killing killing stuff. Shaw actually does that quite well. So at this point I have enough um, DP. I retreat my Vanguard and I actually put Gummy behind Shaw because there's a lot of guys, these like, you know, junkmen that are coming from the top and Shaw won't be able to block them all so I put Gummy down first and then I very quickly also switch my um, one block guard to a tank because um, although one block guards do a lot of damage, they can only block one, which means just now when those all those units were running through, um, they would have slipped past if I didn't switch to a tank. And I also switched to Frostleaf over here because Vigna can also only block one, so I needed to put another guard down to basically be able to block more. And using an AoE guard facing up is very, very nice in this slot. As you can see over here, um, if we go back a little bit, Frostleaf is actually able to do damage while they're in this tile. So having an AoE guard or a range guard facing up is, is quite nice. At this point, everything is flooding in. I activate everybody's skills, and this is the last wave, so there's no point saving my skills. And then, um, and then this is why I love Jitano. I think if I use Skyfire, something would have slipped here. But Jitano hitting twelve tiles at once, like I don't think anything can match that. That is. Just, just like, just, just look at this replay. Holy, like, look at, look at this. Look at how many units are running through. And then look at the moment she pops her skill. Look at this. Oh my god. 
I swear something something would have slipped if I used Skyfire. Also, Shirayuki's slow was insane as well. Like, Shirayuki's slowing them down. And, like, Jitano and Shirayuki are super, super OP. Like, they're crazy OP. They're definitely the best four stars in the game. And I actually use Jitano over, over, um, like, on my main as well. I use Jitano over, um, Skyfire. And I use Shirayuki over Meteorite. Because of, like, utility. I think, I think utility trumps damage. Like in the, in this game, like ra range is just king, and having like slow as well, it's it's crazy. All right, so this stage is uh, is very simple. You'll see that I'm actually setting up my teams behind this crossbow, so they actually don't take damage from the crossbows. And you'll see me kind of mirror the two sides like that. It's pretty simple. Um, they start spawn from the top first so I put a vanguard down and then at the bottom I also put another vanguard start generating some DP and then this one will give me DP very very soon and then I have a one block vanguard facing up over here and then a sniper facing facing left and I'm basically just using this one block vanguard as a DPS um, or a damage dealer. And then I put a, um, actually was supposed to put Perfumer down first, start healing everybody. Basically put a two block guard over here. It could be, it doesn't even need to be a ranged two block guard in, in this slot. It could be like any, any guard, probably would work. Probably could have used any defender in this slot. It probably that would have worked as well. And then a healer facing facing um, left again. And this basically covers the top lane. I eventually, at some point, I switched out Vigna for Matori Maru. But it actually wasn't necessary. It really wasn't necessary. I could have just used Vigna all the way up to the end. Because that's what I actually did in, when I did this in challenge mode. <laughs> I used Vigna all the way to the end. So I didn't actually need to switch, switch her out. So top like top side is basically just all already covered. Um, I eventually switched switch out my Vanguard for Shaw, but this was also an unnecessary move because I also didn't switch her out during challenge mode. So both these switches were kind of just unnecessary. You didn't really need to switch any of them. This that could have been the final setup and it would have been fine all the way up, up to the end. And then this is pretty much it for normal mode. Um, for challenge mode, there's a lot of switching with like, I had to actually use Jitano here to to help me clear it, but um, for, for normal mode, it's actually fine. You could actually just take this all the way to the end. And that is, yeah, basically the units just come and I didn't even need to use anybody's skills and it was still fine. So this stage is actually quite easy. All right, finally we are at 510. And 510 is, 510's pretty, pretty interesting. I kind of like this stage. So 510, um, it's mainly about the order that you set up your units. And in my normal mode run, I actually did a lot of, um, I made a lot of mistakes. I tried this a few times in challenge mode and it just, I don't think with my current um, team, I'm able to do with only four stars with my current like stats of my team. But I think if I level them a bit more, I might be able to do it with only four stars on challenge mode. Um, this stage is mainly about the order order that you place your teams down because there's gonna be this like sniper dude that shoots the last unit that you deploy. So you wanna um, deploy your units at the right time and in the right order. So this, this one is pretty simple. I put my two vanguards down. Um, stronger vanguard in front, of course, because uh, the, the one in the back is just to generate DP, really. And then I have a ranged guard facing down over here. And then once I have enough DP, I deploy my 
AoE caster. Facing right. And then, um, this is pretty straightforward. Actually, because there's not any ranged units that come from the top, come from the bottom, uh, if you deploy a unit here, it's not actually going to take any damage. So I put Haze down here, facing up, and then Shirayuki facing right as well, down here. So right now it's fine. Um, eventually there's going to be crossbows that spawn later on. And that's, that's when it gets tricky. So in the beginning, it's actually fine. Uh, what you have to watch out for over here is once this big guy starts moving, like you probably should just pop all your skills because he actually does. You don't want him to like hit your um, scavenger for, for too long because I think on his fourth hit, he actually stuns. And once he stuns, everything starts slipping by. And back here, there's not enough DPS to take down, take out the units. So popping your skills when the, the guy starts moving is pretty pretty huge. Now over here, I actually made a mistake. Um, you know, I, I, if you didn't see, I deployed my healer before the big guy got into range, so I could so so my scavenger could actually take the hits. Um, but after I killed the big dude, I actually made a mistake, and the mistake was the I, I mentioned before the order of you deploying your units is very very important. So over here, I actually deployed Gummy first, which is actually not the right thing to do. I was supposed to deploy um, Perfumer first, because the sniper guy is coming out now, and he hits the last guy that he that he targets. Now, thankfully, I had Gravel on my team. If I didn't, it would have been a disaster. <laughs> so um, as you can see, he's doing a lot of damage. He's hitting the last unit that I deployed, which was Perfumer. I should have deployed them in, in a different order and have him hit Gummy instead. So Perfumer is, the, the thing about this dude up here is he, on his fourth shot, he does like double damage, which as you can see, he almost killed Perfumer with his normal shot. So if he hits Perfumer with a fourth shot, Perfumer's dead for sure, like 100%. So in order to combat that, um, and I, th I saw that I had enough um, DP, I quickly retreated my scavenger. And then I put down Gravel. Yes, gravel. Here we go again. Oh, Gra gravel fulfilling her destiny. So nice. Now, I'm actually waiting right now for him to shoot first. And then I put down Midnight. Because I was afraid of Midnight getting shot and then tanking the next guy immediately and then, and then just dying. So I made a few fast like movements over here. Really, really fast movements. Was I... I um, took out Courier and I put down Korra. So now my Korra is the last unit that I deployed, which means that he's just gonna keep hitting my Korra. It is also very important that you have Perfumer facing down if you, um, I forgot to mention that, because there's gonna be crossbows that spawn later on. And if you don't have your Perfumer facing down, uh, Sherry Key's gonna die, because there's gonna be a crossbow facing this way. Very, very soon. The crossbow has, has spawned. And Midnight's going to start taking quite a bit of damage. And since Korra's a tank, Korra can tank his, her, his fourth shot, as you can see. It still brings her to like 40% health, which is pretty rough. So this is the final setup. Um, all you really need to do is like make sure you pop your skills at the right time. And as you can see, if you didn't notice before, um, Shirayuki and uh, Chitano have been slowly working, whittling down his health at the, at the same time as well. And this is, this is like, this is when Chitano is like super strong. So you see all these units that are slipping by and then there's like pressure on this, of the, this guy and then also on the top side. Um, but I'm kind of waiting for Chitano's skill. So you can see there's like so many units, so many things that I need to hit. And then I activate Chitano's skill right, right here, right now. And Jatano's able to basically DPS the top side while hitting the boss. And then all these that are about to come into range as well.
So this is one of the special stages where I actually had to use a second, um, a second range guard. It probably would have been fine to use any like a third defender here. It probably would have also worked as well. Um, but I was afraid the boss side would not be doing enough damage, especially once Mephisto starts moving. So I used a range guard instead. To basically just like because a range guard can also hit this spot if I have them facing down. So right now um, Mephisto has started moving. I just pop all my all, all my uh, skills, use all my units cooldowns, and then he's getting into range. And at this point, uh, with Shirayuki hitting and Jitano hitting him, he should be dead. And Haze also as well. And the Midnight's actually taking quite a lot of damage. He's not max level, so um, I think he's dead over here. He should be dead very, very soon. I'm just hoping I could pop his skill before he dies. And I was thinking if there was any way to save him, but there, there isn't. He's just, he's, he's dead. So that, that's actually fine with Midnight dying. Um, it's perfectly okay. Now, I'm right now I'm just waiting for Jotano's skill again. And I think this is kind of... All. I think this is one of the maps where actually you can see Jotano's strength as well. Because Jotano can hit two lanes at once. She can DPS what's behind her and also all the stuff over here at the same time. Um, right now I'm just stalling. I'm using Courier to block. Because right now Gummy's already blocking three. So if I had more units up top, um, but then he does the force shot which kills Courier. But it's fine. I use Scavenger as well to... Uh, to block and stall for time. And unfortunately, Scavenger dies. So then I use Gravel to tank the fourth shot again. As you can see over here, boom, and then Gravel's gone. Actually, if you didn't notice, I popped my Shoryuki's skill over here. So Shoryuki is actually able to hit these that are here and these that are over here and then the, the the lane down here as well as the boss at the same time. Like it's 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 insane. Like look at look at how many units. If if it was Skyfire, something would have something like something would have survived or something. Like it's it's crazy. Alright, so, um, I don't know why my nose is super itchy. So at this point, um, whenever your cooldowns are up, just, uh, just pop your skills. And then this guy can't be blocked, so he just, he just keeps walking. But you just want to do a lot of damage to him. And I was thinking if I should use Midnight to help the top lane, but then I, I saw him walking past and I was like, okay, let me, let me just, uh, put some extra damage on him. So I, I put Midnight here to... You know, finish him off with one last attack. A stylish finish. And uh, that's basically it. So after this, I have, um, I just put down gravel and then I finish him off. And that is pretty much it. Okay, so that was it for, for um, the chapter five guide. And hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully this was able to help you, um, you know, get past any stage that you're stuck in. And I think at some point um, I will finish the side missions for chapter five, as well as the challenge mode. And once I do that, I will make another like a con continuation of um, this video. So there'll be a part two and a part three. Part two probably for the side stages, and part three for um, challenge mode. So if you want to catch that, be sure to subscribe. If you haven't done so, um, I make a lot of like guide videos like these, especially like commentary ones. So hopefully you, uh, hopefully you enjoyed. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.